What's up everyone? My name is Andrew. I'm the headmaster over here at Dune uh, and I'm here to teach you today about Farcaster uh, and mainly talk about how you can use a new dashboard I've created to understand, analyze, um, and track words, users, and channels. Basically understand trends on Farcaster. If you have no idea what Farcaster is, it's essentially the newest kind of Web3 social protocol. Uh, you can kind of think of it as if Twitter and Reddit had a baby. That's kind of how the main app on Farcaster looks. It's called Warpcast. Uh, we'll talk about what's the difference between Farcaster and Warpcast in a second. If you don't know anything about Farcaster, go and check out this guy that I wrote first. I do a 20 minute audio overview kind of talking about all the structures in this guide. But essentially all you need to know is that there's on-chain contracts for managing identity. There are kind of off-chain stored in hubs. There are messages, which is like everything about a user's profile, everything about like the casts, who they follow, stuff like channels, that's all in hubs. And then you have clients that are built on top of hubs, stuff like Warpcast, stuff that's like Supercast, Yup.io. They build their own front ends that talk and store data to hubs, right? So this guide will tell you all about how you can query the data and work with different data structures. I'm not going to walk through all of that now. Um, instead, I'm going to walk you through a new dashboard I've built, which is Farcaster Trends. And so the idea here is that you can find and track trends across words, users, and channels, right? So if you think of this guide as your like understanding of basics of like, okay, how do I just query how many followers a user has or like how many like likes a cast has. If that's your basic guide here, when you're ready to take it to the next level, then you can start working with some of these queries that kind of combine things, do user clustering, do user labeling, and allow you to do a bunch of different kinds of filters, All right? So I'm just gonna walk through this section by section, the link to the guide, as well as the link to this dashboard and a link to the guide that this video is a part of. That's all gonna be in the description below so you can read through it. Cool, so let's just get straight into it. First things first, trending words. Anyone familiar with kind of natural language processing probably has heard of TF IDF, which is just term frequency and versus document frequency. You don't have to worry about it if you don't understand what that means. Basically, this is just a way of identifying what are the most frequent words that are popping up on Farcaster casts, right? So you can see DGEN is one of the most popular words. It's been sent by 2,380 casters. It's a 770 uh, user increase over the previous week, and it's been casted about 83,000 times. Right. You can see some other ones here like airdrop or base or frame or mint. Like it's not surprising to see these words here. Um, something else you can do on the words channel filter here is instead of just seeing trending words overall, I might want to filter for just trending words in frames. You know, so I could put this in, I could hit enter. And if I chose to ran it, it would show me just trending words within that channel. Something I'll note is that this is filtered based off of only users who are active tier or higher, right? Because you can imagine if I didn't filter by some sort of user quality, I would get a bunch of spam words in here. Anyone who's on Twitter knows that there are a bunch of bots who just spam things all the time, right? So you might ask, okay, how did you do an active tier filter? All right, so let's now move down to the user section here where you'll be able to see I've created five tiers of users you're either an NPC, which is just you have less than 400 followers, uh, or you're active, which is what Warpcast uses for their active badge. It's a very similar definition, 400 plus followers, at least one cast. Um, I use an engagement score, which is your number of likes plus three times your number of recasts plus 10 times your number of replies that you received. Warpcast says you have to get at least one like and one reply, which is about 100 plus um, an engagement. You'll see why I use an engagement score later on. It's just an easier way of reflecting how much engagement a user channel is getting. Um, so you have active, you have star, you have influencer, and you have VIP. You can see how many users fit into each tier. So out of 83,000 active, well, out of 83,000 users who sent a cast in the last week, 80,000 of them are NPCs, right? So you can kind of consider like the users up here are the ones who are actually driving the network. The users down here, like they're on the platform, but they're not really at a point yet where they're maybe 
adding a ton of value or signal to Farcaster, right? And you can see their week over week increases as well, but that's just an overview, right? You want to be able to understand the users. So I'm gonna scroll past this trending users first and just take us to all users. And what you can see here is I've created a query that shows their tier, their Farcaster ID, their username, age, the number of channels that they cast it in, the top channels that they cast it in, the top domains, like the links that they share, uh, and the number of followers, um, and then a bunch of like week over week increases. Um, I've also tied in their on like their connected addresses to see, okay, Dan, who's the founder, has a thousand transactions um, and 800k in volume across like DEXs and NFT marketplaces, and he's deployed 198 contracts, right? Um, so you can kind of use this in addition to like their cast engagement and follower numbers to understand like are they just a power user of farcaster are they also a power user on chain and kind of see like week over week are they trending up or down or not so if i put in my own farcaster id i can see oh i'm here i'm active tier i have about 1600 followers i casted less this week um, and i've had about a thousand transactions across my connected addresses which you can actually see my connected addresses over here Cool. So how this this kind of gives you an overview over the users, but you want to understand trending users, right? So like I want to understand who are the highest growing or fastest growing new users. So I have this query here, which is going to become your best friend um, to filter for. OK, I want users who are less than seven days old and have the highest growth in followers. Right. So I can see there's a bunch here like Coinbase Wallet, like W Launchpad, Azure Base, Farmir that seem to be new accounts that are growing quickly. So to give a clearer example of how you might use this, for example, I know Jesse Pollock from Base is very active talking to builders. I want to understand who are the highest trending users or the most engaged users that Jesse has followed, right? So I know that Jesse, his username is Jesse Pollock. I want to track people he's followed. I'm going to hit enter and apply these parameters and we'll just give it probably 10 to 20 seconds for it to run. Cool. All right. So now it's ran and I can see that um, out of users that Jesse has followed, um, and I think I have a filter here for just within the last 14 days, the highest in engagement. One of them is join Royal. I can see they're participating in their own channel. It looks like and they've been sharing a bunch of frames. So maybe they're a frame developer, you know, um, or I might look down here and I see there's this guy named Miguel who seems to be active on Zor and to be sharing Zor links. Probably it's some NFT creator, you know, um, so I might click into it and see, OK, let me learn more about this guy. Uh, maybe I go follow him, talk to him, reach out. Um, and that's my way of finding builders. You can also add token filters so I could filter for trending users who have ever held a nouns token uh, or channel filters. I could filter for just the frames channel and see who are the trending new users growing in an engagement who are in the frames channel, right? So kind of, I know it's like six different parameters. You can kind of learn to mix and match them to kind of identify the kinds of users that you might be interested in reaching out to whether that's as a CRM, whether that's for creating a mint list, whether that's creating a frame allow list, there's really a lot you can do here. And if you disagree with me on the user tiering, feel free to just DM me on Warpcast and let me know. Um, I'm happy to have an open debate about it. The last section here is just channel trending stats. I've created five tiers of channels. Uh, you're either quiet, it's either just some friends, or it's a niche channel, uh, or it's a subculture. Uh, where it's like a lot of people know about it, but they might not all be in it. Um, and then there's a stadium, which is like if someone casts in a stadium channel and it takes off, it's highly likely that like everyone on Warpcast sees that cast. You know, there's a lot of work that can be done here to cluster these even further. Um, I think that looking at Reddit ch subreddits um, and learning from how those are categorized is something that I want to do. Um, so if you have experience in doing that, please reach out to me. Um, you can see the distribution of channels here. Um, a lot of channels are just a few friends in there. Um, we have maybe 25 channels here that are like very active and high visibility. Um, I expect this to grow a lot over the next couple months or so. But just like above uh, for users, we have this query here that shows 
all Farcaster channels. So you could search a channel and see like how is it performing. So I can go here and search for Byte Explorers and I can see I have a small channel. It's got about 17 people in it, seven days old, nine casts. It's still very young, you know, versus something like Degen or Frames that has a ton more activity. Um, and you might look at this and see, okay, like one thing you want to know is like, who are the top influential casters inside of a channel? Um, an influential caster is just someone who is of influencer tier or VIP tier. Um, and so if there's a channel that actually doesn't have an influential uh, casters, it might be spam um, or it might just be like still undiscovered, you know? Um, so that's definitely something to keep in mind. Like I see there are a few Thailand channels in here that seem to not have any influential casters in them yet. Uh, I might then go and click into them and see like, oh, does this look organic or not? Or is this just a bunch of people? It looks like they're just spamming airdrops, you know? Um, so just like users, you can sort by trending channels. You can sort by their age. You can sort by their um, activity. I think something interesting to do here is just to sort by which channels are growing by the number of influencers. Um, so if I click here, and sort this, I can see, oh, Super Bowl and ARCs and Consumer Crypto and Do Nothing. These are some of the channels that are actually still niche that have influencers in them. And so those might be ones that I want to get into sooner. Right. So I can also filter for what are the active channels that a specific user or what are the trending channels that a specific user has been a part of. And I can also filter for trending channels, again, where someone might hold a Nouns token or the DGEN token, any ERC-20 or NFT. Um, so this is kind of just a first stab of helping people understand, like, how much you can do with on-chain, like, with, like, social data that's tied to crypto addresses. Um, there's a mix of on-chain analysis, social graph analysis, trend analysis, basically everything that would have cost you thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars to do on Twitter you can just do here. Uh, and all of these queries are open source. You can query from them using kind of like this syntax where this is the query ID, right? So if I click into here, you can see the query ID up here. Um, if you want to use this in API, you can just use this right away. Uh, we have a free API plan. Um, you can go and download it as a CSV. You can export it as JSON, build a frame with it, build off of it. Like there's a lot you can do with this data now. So. I hope that helps you better understand Farcaster, understand like some of the unlock of the data analysis you can do here um, and go have fun with it. Um, again, my name is Andrew. You can go and follow me on Warpcast. I'm always open to chatting. I'm hanging out mostly in these three channels, Data, Dune, and Byte Explorers. Um, I can't wait to see what trends you guys find and what kind of queries and frames and whatnot you build off of the, the ones here. So... I'll see you. I'll see you around um, and take care.